adding fractions isn't that much harder than multiplying fractions. There's two things to remember. Number one, you gotta change it to an improper fraction. So if it's written like one and a half, you've gotta change it to three over two in order to add them together. And the second thing is it has to have a common denominator. In other words, the bottoms gotta be the same. If they're not the same, you gotta figure out a way to make the bottoms the same. So let's look at this example here. In this example, you notice the bottoms are the same and they're already in fraction form. So all we simply have to do is add the tops and the bottom stays the same when you're adding. So four plus one is five sevenths. Another example, the bottoms are already the same, perfect. Then we just simply have to add the tops. Three plus one is four over two. Now we can change four over two to two whole because two goes in the four twice. In this case, you notice the bottoms are not the same. This bottom is five and this bottom is three. What can we multiply five by and also multiply three by so that they're exactly the same? We need to get a common denominator. Well, if I go five, 10, 15, and then I count by threes, three, six, nine, 12, 15, 15 seems to be pretty common. So I'm gonna times this by three to make it 15, but I gotta do the same to the top to keep the fraction equivalent. Now, I must multiply this by five in order to make this bottom 15, so I'd better do the same for the top. So let's work it out. We know the bottom's gonna be 15. Three times three is nine plus. We know the bottom on this side's gonna be 15 because that's what we changed it to. And then two times five is 10. And our answer is 10 plus nine is 19 out of 15. The last thing to do is to change it back to a improper fraction. Sorry, mixed number. So 15 goes in the 19 one time because one times 15 is 15 and we've got four left over. And there's our final answer. Here's another one. If we look at this nine and 12, okay, the easiest one for us to do, we could start counting and go nine, 18, uh, 27, and then nine times four is 36. And then if we look at 12, count by 12s, 12, 24, 36, aha, 36 seems to be the common denominator out of the two of them. So 36 is what we want to try to make both of these numbers. So let's do it. We times nine by four to get 36, and we times seven by four. What do we times 12 by to get 36? We times it by three, so we better do the same with the top. So let's work it out. We know the bottoms are gonna be 36 because that was the common denominator that we wanted to get. So what's seven times four? It's 28. What is three times eight? It's 24. 28 plus 24, if you add them together, on the side you can do this. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, carry the 1, 2, 4, 5. So the answer here will be 52 on the top and 36 on the bottom. Now we can simplify this a bit. Uh, we can look at how many times is 36 going to 52? Well, it's only going to be one time, okay? and there's going to be a few left over. There's go actually going to be 16 left over out of 36. But we can make this even smaller. If we divide 16 by 2, we'll get 8. If we divide 36 by 2, we'll get 18. So we'll end up with 1 and 8 over 18. Ooh, but wait a second. 
we could still divide this by 2 again. So let's divide this by 2 again and divide this fraction by 2 and our answer will be 1 and 4 ninths. Now if we had just divided the top and the bottom by 4 from the very beginning, we would have gotten 4 ninths in that answer. So in this one right here, when you're adding these, the only way to do them is to simply change it to an improper fraction and then add them up and then change them back. So let's check out this one. We've got 2 times 4 is 8, so we'll keep the bottom the same there. 2 times 4 is 8, 9, 10, 11. And let's change this guy as well. 8, 6 is a 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53. Good. Now that we've changed them to both fractions, the bottoms are not the same. How do I make this 4 and 8 have the same bottom? Well, all i got to do is times this by 2. And then this will be 22 over 8 plus 53 over 8. And my grand total will be 75 over 8. Let's change that to a mixed number. Well, I know 8 times 8 is 64. 9 times 8 is 72. So it'll go in 9 times, and there will be 3 left over out of 8. And there's our answer. For subtraction of fractions, it's done exactly the same way. We have to have a common denominator, and we've got to change it to a improper fraction. So in this one again, it's just look at the bottoms. The bottoms are the same when you're taken away, so it's going to be straightforward. 7 take away 3 is 4 over 8, but you know 4 eighths can be reduced to 1 half, because that is a half. Divide this by 4 and divide this by 4. Here's a little bit harder one. Again, we have to change it to a improper fraction. So let's change 2 and 3 quarters to an improper fraction. 2 times 4 is 8, 9, 10, 11. So we've got 11 over 4, take away 3 over 2. The bottoms are not the same, but we can make this 2 become a 4 real easy. Just multiply the bottom by 2 and the top by 2. And now we're left with 11 over 4. Take away 2 times 3 is 6. 2 times 2, of course, is 4. And we're going to be left with 11 take away 6, which is 5 over 4. And of course, you know 5 over 4 can be written as 1 and 1 quarter if you change it back to a improper, sorry, a mixed number. Here's another example. Again, we got 4 subtract 9 over 10. So, remember, any number can be written as a fraction. So if I'm 4 years old, I could write that as 4 over 1. That's still 4. And we're subtracting 9 over 10. Now, how can we make this 1 become a 10? Simply times it by 10, and we got to times the top by 10. Now we should have 4 times 10 is 40 over 10 take away 9 over 10 and we should be left with 31 over 10 change it back to a mixed number well 10 goes into 31 three times and then there's going to be one left over out of 10 and that's our answer